Alrighty, my friends. Hello, hello. Here we are. 16th of March, 2022. Apologies for being a little late this morning. I'm just trying to get my stuff in order to go back into the house to get a handkerchief. Because uh, I have a feeling that my nose might start running partly through this uh, <laughs> live stream. And feed the chooks and do all sorts of things. A little bit, a little bit lethargic this morning. Sort of on day... Was it Wednesday? I guess it's day four, maybe it's day three of um, that virus thing that everyone talks about. So, um, but no big problem. Here we are. Good morning, Kay. Um, I was just quickly had a look. I haven't opened Facebook yet um, anywhere other than right now, right here. And there's no questions. So I'm uh, free. I'm free to talk uh, about whatever you guys might ask from the floor as you get on. Um... What's going on? We've got full moon coming up in um, two and a half days. It, it, it's about 8.20, I think, p.m. my time. Um, so that's pretty much 12 hours from now um, on Friday. So two and a half days away. So we're into that sort of intensification phase of leading up to the full moon. Uh, this full moon, you know, uh, from what I'm feeling, is going to pack a little bit of a punch, um, which is good. It's good. I think so much stuff's happening on the planet right now. I, I, you know, why not just turn it up another notch, intensify it a little bit more. We're seeing some huge unravelings um, occurring, and uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. I know, I know it's quite uncomfortable. I know many of us are not really enjoying how it's all feeling. But I think if we step back and just have a look at the broader picture of what's going on right now, it is incredibly um, encouraging that so much is in a state of flux. So much is being revealed. So much is, is coming out to the fore in terms of, you know, information and, you know, just a whole heap of, you know, authoritarian control is being exposed for what it is. And that's, and that's good, right? And that is good, and it's happening on all sorts of levels, both you know externally, um, out there in the world, in, in bigger schemes and bigger pictures, but also internally with our, ourselves. You know, we're inter interpersonal relationships, and even our relationship with ourself. Um, I think we're all, many of us are getting the opportunity to look at how this, you know, the rules and the shoulds and the authoritarian control and the manipulation that goes on. We manipulate ourselves quite a lot. You know, we manipulate ourselves with this mind out of doing, you know, our heart. Hey, Sister Susie. So, um, what did Kay wrote in? Building resilience, keeping strong mentally. Yeah, that's what I've been talking about uh, this month. Resilience. Um, I've talked about it a few times now uh, in, my, in, my, in my group and also in the Wisdom Sacred Circle. Um, but yeah, this thing called resilience, a lot of, a lot of, the old school way of thinking about resilience is you've sort of had to earn it through going through hardships, right? That we got more resilient, the more practiced we got at dealing with challenges and and intensity. And, and, and that's true, right? That's true. There's nothing wrong with that. That is absolutely how it works, right? The more that we get used to dealing with challenging situations, the better we get at dealing with them in general. And so we build up resilience. We build up a tolerance for pain, you know, people who are in chronic pain day in, day out have a very high pain threshold, right? <laughs> Those things that would put most of us, you know, into, you know, into stress doesn't, doesn't worry them anymore because they're used to dealing with pain. They've dealt, built a, a, a certain coping mechanism for pain. So that's, 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 that's there and that's normal. That's the old way and that's not wrong. But I think what I've been talking about, what I've been exploring, what I've been delving into for myself and, and talking about with others, is this idea that we can really sort of hack this process of building resilience um, and not need to gain it through so much suffering and rather find a level of resilience that comes with changing our perspective of the world, changing our perspective of ourself and our relationship with the world, changing our perspective or expanding our perspective of ourselves and the challenge that we feel would normally be overwhelming, quote unquote, because that's what we want to have resilience to, right? We want to have resilience to being able to mentally 
you know, avoid a stress reaction to a situation that is overwhelming. It is more information or more intensity, more more fear, quote unquote, than what you are normally used to dealing with. And thus it is, you know, out of your comfort range and thus it is overwhelming. And thus we tend to invoke a stress response and there for can quite often go down a slippery slope of not being able to cope very well, not function very well, not get great outcomes. Um, as a result of now we've initiated a stress response and we've cut ourselves off from our intuitive knowing and our ability to think clearly and to act concisely and thus it turns into a bit of a shit show. <clears throat> Um, so one of the ways of, of, of gaining more resilience without necessarily having to test ourselves over and over again, without actually having to do the hard work of putting ourselves in stressful situations and slowly but surely learning to cope with it, um, is to consciously choose to expand our perspective that we hold of ourself and how we relate to these various challenges when we are much more aware of the true nature of the challenge and the true nature of us being an expanded aspect of the divine, uh, the challenge becomes much less overwhelming. It becomes much less important. And ironically, when it becomes much less important, it actually becomes much easier to solve. <laughs> I know, I know. Our society has trained us to think that if we make things really important and try really hard and put all of our focus on it, then we're more likely to succeed against it. But it's not the case, right? When you do that, when you put all of your focus onto something as if it's a challenge and that you need to overcome it and it's really, really important because if it doesn't, it's going to be a, a travesty and a tragedy and all the rest of it, you create these levels and layers of stress, these contractions in your field that actually prevent you or limit you from having a good outcome limit you from your intuitive knowing, limit you from your ability to, to reason even, right? It, it works, you know, when you go into a stress response, the frontal cortex contracts, right? And all of the all of the blood, all of the energy goes to your reptilian brain that wants to fight or flight its way out of the situation, right? So <laughs> it's not that easy to punch your way out of a complex situation. And, and from that place, you know, we tend to get even more stressed that now we're not coping with the complexities of the issue because we've initiated a stress response and, and, and everything's in, in, the, in the lower mind, everything's in the reptilian response to the world, right? Our old tried and tested survival mechanisms, flight, flight, freeze or, or fawn. So we want to avoid that. And, and one of the ways of avoiding that is, well, two of the ways, there's two ways to avoid it. One is to train yourself over and over again, putting yourself in stressful situations, slowly but surely lifting your threshold to what you uh, consider dangerous. And the other is to radically shift your point of view of who you be. And, and from that, everything else seems less important. Susie says, I can do that with a lot of things, except it is so hard dealing with the Psychic attacks. The last three days have been exhausting. They present in my physical. I'm doing my bet. I'm doing my best, but man, it's difficult. Yeah, and we all have Achilles heels. Um, we all have things that are more triggering left in our field from other lifetimes, generally other other times and spaces. So some people, uh, you know, find you know physical heights much more difficult to deal with. Other people find uh, public speaking much more difficult to deal with. Some people find this, this idea of psychic attack or, or you know, um, energies coming at us that are unseen much more hard to deal with than others. You know, um, ultimately, it's all the same. Ultimately, from, from the, you know, from the broader picture, if you can cope with one, you can cope with all. But we have to also be compassionate that we have various influences left in our field from past lifetimes generally where certain things get escalated in their importance level and thus create stress much more quickly, right? Some things we are more sensitive to than others. And each, is, each of us are different in that way with, a, you know, a, a rich and complex um, tapestry right? Entanglement is the word I was going to use, but I decided to change it to tapestry of, of vibrations. That's what makes, <clears throat> excuse me. No, it's a bit more there. <clears throat> okay. So, um, so the point is, is to recognize that we're all individual. There's no shoulds 
and to be compassionate with ourselves. When we make it less wrong that we are struggling with something and don't put so much emphasis on the importance of what we're struggling or in the, what's the right word? Veracity of what we are struggling with, you know. We, we tend to think that if something's particularly hard for us, then it must be uh, stronger than us. It's not. It's just that we have a, we have a, a certain chink in our armor, if, if you like, right? We have a certain um, sensitivity to something. We can overcome it, and you will overcome it. And it's just a matter of, of, you know, generally relaxing into awareness and allowing yourself to re, uh, not prioritize, but re-perspectivize. Is perspectivize a word? It is now. Re-perspectivize your uh, relationship with this thing called psychic attack so that you can take the story out of it. When you can release the narrative around who is delivering the psychic attack and how bad it is and all of the history that you cling to, right? When you can find release from that, you know, employ the vibration of forgiveness, employ, employ the vibration of unconditional love to basically lift you out of that story, you tend to find that the situation becomes much easier to deal with on its on its fundamentals rather than on the relationship that you have with the situation, right? We all do this with all sorts of different things. We create our own relationship with a situation that is not necessarily the way it has to be. I was almost gonna say it's not necessarily the truth, but what is the truth, right? It's not the way that it has to be. It doesn't have to be that psychic attack is really hard for you to deal with. It's just that it, that's your history, right? So now you have this body of evidence that keeps you in this narrative that psychic attack is habitually hard for you to deal with. And so it is, right? And every time you get psychically attacked, you feel down about yourself and feel frustrated and angry and it's not fair and et cetera, et cetera. Why? All of the different human emotions that come with that. Um, and you tend to fight against it, right? You tend to... Uh, focus on the problem, right? Focus on psychic attack, focus on the person who is doing the psychic attack as if they are the one that is preventing you from being happy, right? They're the one that's preventing you from relaxing. They're the one that's preventing you from being successful. And this goes on for everything, right? Susie, this is not just about you and psychic attack. This is for everyone about all different types of challenges that are in our lives. We tend to take our primary challenge and put it on a fucking very high pedestal, right? As something that we are going to conquer um, or that we feel the victim to or we oscillate between the two, right? Wanting to conquer it, feeling like the victim, etc., etc. I understand. I do get this appearing for me to heal, but Jesus. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the fact that it's getting really intense right now is a good sign. This is, this is it, right? Everything... I believe everyone is going through an intensification of their core issues right now. That's that's the nature of this vibration. It's a good thing. This is this is the healing process in full swing. Um, we tend to always get an intensification of what we are releasing, and that's you know that's what I keep reminding myself um, when when I'm you know quote unquote suffering or or uh, maybe if I'm not suffering but I'm just aware of the discomfort that I'm currently feeling. It's reminding myself what I'm feeling is what I'm releasing, right? What I'm thinking is what I'm releasing. What I'm experiencing right now is what I'm releasing. This is the process of my evolution. This is the process of my ascension happening right now. So the fact that you can't ignore the things that are up for you to relax out of, right? Just to relax out of. You don't need to fight your way through it. You don't need to solve these issues. This is the point, right? Um, you just need to relax through what's happening and create distance from it. You just expand out of this idea of psychic attack. Because the truth is, the thing that you feel that is psychically attacking you is not more powerful than you. You've just allowed yourself to fall into this narrative where it's having such a strong influence and therefore it can because you keep... Because you've experienced the strong influence, you believe that it can always be a strong influence and therefore it is always a strong influence. And, and you know, it's a self-perpetuating belief system. Um, and again, you're not alone in this, Susie. Everyone does this, right? We all create these belief systems that are self-perpetuating uh, and we think it's the truth. We think it's our truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I know it's that way because and we have all of this evidence, all of this history to prove that it's the way that it is. Right, but the problem is, or the, or the point is, that all of that history was created from a belief. 
And so now we're using what was created by a belief to justify the belief. And so it's a self-perpetuating cycle um, that tends to, um, before it heals, get quite intense so that it can almost self-destruct, right? It can almost, um, you know, it elevates in its, in, its, in its intensity to the point where something has to happen, right? This is your, haha, I love your positive spin. I will try different ways you have just suggested. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, it's my pleasure. You know, it is, you know, it is one of the ways that I keep myself in some sort of level of sanity is to just keep reminding myself that the, the, the discomfort or the anxiety or the, you know, whatever it is that I'm feeling is what I'm releasing. And it doesn't matter where it's come from. It doesn't matter who I'm releasing it for, whether it's for me or the collective or particular client or family member, etc. Et it doesn't matter. I'm just aware that if it's up, it's up to release. A lot of people get into who does this belong to and all of that stuff. And while that can sometimes help when you realize it's not your stuff, it gets easier to let it go sometimes. Um, Sometimes not. Sometimes when you believe it's not your stuff, then you get really angry that you're experiencing something that's not your stuff. (laughs) Another layer of entanglement. But um, for me, it doesn't matter whose stuff it is, right? If it's in my field and I'm feeling it, then it's it's there for me to release right here, right now. Kay wrote, as mentioned... Change change perspective is so primary in shifting limitations. Love the sense you are making. Oh, it's good that I'm making sense. Um, thanks, Kay. Um, so yeah, it's you know, and it's it's the same. Like I'm I'm in day three or day four of COVID right now. Um I could be suffering like a dog, but I'm choosing not to. I had a pretty average night last night. I had, you know, a pretty strong headache and fevers coming and going, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, I'm framing it that great. Now I've got natural immunity to this fucking thing. So perfect. Short term pain for longer term gain. You know, it's just a matter of, of how we choose to frame it. You know, so I could go into all sorts of narratives that it's so fucking wrong that these bastards created COVID in a lab and released it on the world. And I could go into all of that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, both the boys have got it. Um, Marie's actually okay. <laughs> Marie's actually okay, yeah, but the kids bought it home. Um, so they're both going through it too. And so, of course, it spreads, as it does within a household. So we're sort of uh, in quarantine at home, doing our thing, um, and just in, enjoying that time. Um, but yeah, no one's particularly sick. No one is particularly sick, just moving through the, the phases. It's all a little bit different for each person, but um, in general, yeah, in general, it's fine, Susie thinks. Um, so the point is, you know, you, you, you I could choose a number of different narratives or, or frameworks or perspectives on, on the current situation that I'm facing, you know, but at the end of the day, what is the most beneficial, what's the most beneficial way of of framing of of perspectivizing i'm going to use that word again perspectivizing this situation right because at the end of the day that's all that matters right you know we are in charge of how happy or or not that we are we're in charge of the perspective that we bring to every situation we're in charge of how how bad or how good any situation is right this thing called bad and good is not absolute terms these are very very relative very very personal and subjective terms. And you're in charge of that. You. Yes, you, right? You take responsibility for your perspective of the world. You take responsibility or you have to take responsibility because you're the one responsible for how you choose. Now, the interesting thing is, right, is, hey, Sister Heather, is how much influence there is over the perspectives that you hold. This is very interesting on the planet right now. How much energy, how much influence, right, various organizations, various entities are putting into controlling or influencing, at least heavily influencing the perspective that the general population has towards anything so that those people are not really choosing for themselves. Of course, we've all got outside influences on our on our perspective, all of us. None of us are truly operating from a very innate internal um, uh, intuitive position on, on how we hold a perspective to any situation. There's all sorts of fragments of energy, all sorts of filaments, all sorts of threads that come in to influence the perspective that we end up settling on. And of course, it's always a rich tapestry there of, of what our perspective is. It's, 
it's it's not it's never sort of cut and dry everyone has slightly different perspectives as well our perspectives are uniquely individual based on all of these little threads and while there might be commonality in the overall you know whether it's good or whether it's bad idea but within good and bad <clears throat> within good and bad <clears throat> There's all sorts of nuances, and we have to understand this. A lot of people, and this has been part of this agenda, right? This this control agenda is to polarize everything into yes or no, good or bad, black and white, right? To to to, to wipe away the gray, to 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 um, not really recognize the nuances in everyone's perspective, and they try to lump people together in one camp or the other. And unfortunately, a huge number of the population are buying into this. And this creates a massive division because the truth is when we notice that we all have slightly different perspectives and it's not one camp or the other, we lose, the, we lose this, this polarized division. And so it's not one against the other. Now, everyone's slightly different. So it's, it, 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 it's, me, it's me, you know, on my own, not me and all my comrades fighting the other bastards who have a different perspective, right? Because we recognize that all of our perspectives are at least slightly different. And when we recognize the slight differences, we can let go of this very naive, immature, baseline, tribal mentality of us versus them, right? And But, but you know, open your eyes to what's going on or how the media is presenting various, various fucking situations at the moment. It is... It is so this or that, right? And either you're in this camp or you're in that camp. If you don't proclaim that you're in that camp, then by default, you're in that camp, right? And you're a bad person, right? If you're, if you're not standing for the Ukraine right now, then you're a Russian sympathizer. You know, we saw this exact same thing with, with Black Lives Matter. We, we, we saw this same exact thing with vaccines, you know, the anti-anti-vaxxers, you know, against the anti-vaxxers. It's ridiculous, right? It's absolutely ridiculous. There's a huge amount of nuances in all of these situations, and yet the media try to and effectively uh, achieve splitting the population up into this camp or that camp and pitting one against the other. And as long as we're pitted against each other, the people who are controlling us <laughs> have a free run. They have a free run, right? Because we're too busy fighting each other and thinking that the other camp is what's wrong with the world. When what's wrong with the world is the people who are controlling the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we can laugh about it, but uh but you know, I think we're in a process of waking up, right? I think we're in a process of waking up, but I th also believe it's going to get quite intense as we wake up from this, as people open their eyes, right? Um so fun. It's it, it it's going to be very interesting on this planet for a while, but what I'm encouraging you to do is is not, you know, not to believe what I'm telling you, not to think that you need to align with my beliefs around this, but just to freaking open your eyes and and lift your awareness to how you're being influenced by the world, what is influencing you and what they're trying to achieve by influencing you. Um and and make choice from that point, right? Yeah, divide and conquer through distraction is exactly what they're doing, Heather. Um, you know, just this, just when they started losing the the COVID narrative war, right? With with all of that, in comes the Russia Ukraine narrative, right? Like right on its tail. Um, we'll see it again. They will always have a primary narrative running in the media to keep you distracted from the one that they're now burying. <laughs> Any who's. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what time it is. I've probably done my half hour, right? No, not quite. I've still got another five minutes because I was a bit late starting. Um, so yeah, the point is, is to elevate your awareness into how you're being influenced and make conscious choice that ultimately you are responsible. You and you alone are responsible for the perspective that you hold. There are lots of influences, that is true, and we all have to deal with the influences that are out there, whether the influences are threads of energy from the deep past that we still have vibrating in our energy field, or whether they are new um, or current you know, interactions that are happening in the world, right? Interactions with other people who are in your life, whether those are important people to you, whether they are enemy people to you, whether they are influential, whatever, right? All sorts of interactions are 
uh, shaping your perspective. But ultimately, ultimately, you can expand out of all of that, right? You can choose to meditate or at least find space to dig a little bit deeper into the truth of the situation for you and make conscious choice from that place. Yeah, exactly, Heather. It's like the last two years didn't happen, right? It's just a, 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 a just a bad memory now. <laughs> just a bad memory, this whole, you know, COVID debacle. But, you know, they'll distract people and then they'll just sort of keep that, you know, the next thing. Don't worry. It's going to be interesting. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. That's the point, right? And the way to hack resilience, the way to lift your resilience to dealing with the world and all of these situations that are quite annoying, let's 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 face it, it's quite annoying that there is so much effort, such a huge amount of, of energy being applied to trying to control us, right? Um, that, that That's a bit annoying, right? Because it feels like we're being persecuted, right? <laughs> As humanity. By, by various entities, um, <clears throat> it, it's to let go of that contraction around that realization that, you know, these, these um, vibrations or these entities are putting so much effort into trying to keep us, you know, in a fear-based level of control and to really consciously choose to expand out beyond that influence, to expand out beyond their control. None of us do it perfectly. None of us need to do it perfectly. It's just a matter of doing the best that we can in the situation that we find ourselves. We all get to to choose whether we're happy or not. We all get to choose whether we are, um, how we, what perspective we're holding to the current situation that's playing out in our life. Um, and don't worry too much about what's not immediately in front of you. So many people are putting so much of their attention on something that's happening on the other side of the world. And now I know, you know, everyone's worried that, oh, maybe a nuclear reactor is going to get hit and da 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 and that would be quote-unquote bad. Yeah, it would be bad. Um, but you worrying about it's not going to change <laughs> anything. That's the point, right? It's the point. Uh, and what you focus on, you feed, and what you feed grows stronger. Basically, what you worry about, you create. Uh, so many people don't get that. And, and when I try to mention it to them, they, they look at me as if I've got two heads. It's like, you know, you worrying about it is actually creating these situations. Um, so stop it. Stop it. Stop worrying about what you don't need to worry about. Look after yourself in this moment right now. Be the best version of yourself in the situation that you are in rather than applying all of this mentality, all of this, all, and all of the emotionality that goes with it to a situation that you don't know the truth about. And let's face it, none of us know the truth about what's happening over there. You know, the media has proven itself time and time again to be corrupt, right, and manipulative. Like, just with this whole thing, they've shown so many different images that weren't actually pertaining to the current situation um, to, you know, tell their story. Don't let the truth stand in the way of a good story. Um, that it's obvious that nothing that, you know, comes out of their mouth is truth anymore. So why are people still listening to it? Why are people still putting any emphasis on what the media is telling them? Um, you know, and it's not like social media is any better. Social media is the Wild West and has got all sorts of misinformation and disinformation in it. There's no doubt about that as well. Um, ultimately, the only information that really matters is what are you feeling in your heart? Uh, let go of doing this world so intellectually with, with what you can see, you know? What do you feel in your heart is the best thing to do about basically what's in front of you right now because this is where your life is. It's here and now. It's not anywhere else and it's not in the future and it's not in the past. It's here and it's now and it's what's in front of you. And so that's it, friends. If you can manage that, then you will be you know, incredibly resilient to, to the challenges that the world throws up at you because you have a foundation in your own heart. You have a foundation in your own deeper knowing of the divinity that you be. And that sort of uh, overcomes these surface challenges of various situations that are quote unquote uncomfortable in your life, concerning, worrying, etc., etc. Right? When you really just um, relax into uh, what's going on for you. Anyway, my friends, much, much love. Uh, I'll be back next week. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free. You can always reach out to me. I'm here to serve. Um, Bye for now. Namaste.